to your God also. That is not the time to sing unto the Lord. Do it in your private time, in congregational praise. Hallelujah. Testimony time. The first of my list is Brother Emmanuel this morning. Brother Emmanuel, please step forward for your testimony as Brother Success will be getting ready. Hallelujah. Even though you are not giving your name, just come forward to testify. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, I'm here to testify. Thank God for my life, what you have done for me. Uh, I can say that uh, since uh, 1992, yeah, since 1992, if I remember quite all right, that I started smoking cigarettes. I smoke and smoke and so, in fact, I'm a king of smoker. <laughs> And I spent almost 30 years in Libya. Libya, they don't drink, they don't do anything. So our happiness, everything is always galit. Because that's freedom. So for that, if you come to my shop, under my table, you will find Astrid, the king of Astrid, over there. In fact, I smoke. My car front, back, everywhere is smoking. It's galit. I try my best. If it's on siege, I know that I have to stop. I try and try and try. I couldn't. In fact, even since I started this church, almost 30 to two years now, any time I'll come to this church, I have the in front of my back. If I'm not had it upside there, I'll have the back there. In fact, I try. But they say that everything has your own time. That's it. So our last program in this church, that's a breaking of a parallel. Is this so almost I must prepare a program. Yes. Almost about three months, four months ago. That's the day that to deliver me from the rate. And I swear to my God that I will never and never go back to Zgarit again. In fact, even that day, that day, for you to know how Satan is strong to destroy your children. That very day, I have three sticks remaining in my box, in my Zgarit box. After the pastor delivered me, going home, I said, okay, these three sticks, since I'm not going to smoke again, I have to finish it before I know that, yes, everything is gone. Then my wife said, what? You are bringing cancer half of yourself. They deliver you in the morning. Then you bring, you want to stop it, it's it. If you want to stop, then you have to stop it. So my friend, uh, my husband, throw it. And my, my friend that he followed me, that we came and going back, they said, Daddy, it's all good. You know, this and that, it's okay. Then I break it. I said, God, this one that is going, let it be forever and ever. And I said to myself, we went home. One week, two weeks, three weeks. In fact, say that day, out to present days. Even I don't even remember that I spoke in my life before. Mm. As you can see me, they tell you in my body. Yes. So I thank God and I thank Papa. I thank all the completion. Even I believe that truth me. Many people follow me that very day. If people will remember that just that them also stop this garage. How God uh, touched me for me to stop my own. I pray that God also to touch them. As they promised in this church, it should be so forever. They should stop it because the lake is not even good for the head. So thank you. I'm here with my family to thank God and give God all the glory for what you have done for me. Uh, Hallelujah. Just one or two words because the whole world wants to hear you. Because you say you was a king of smoking. And what, and what does that cost you? At least monthly, what you have been spending on cigarettes, who would want to hear? Because there are other people who are passing through the city. They are even using their Sunday loan to buy cigarettes. They invest it on cigarettes. So what, how much, I mean, how much did that cost you, what you have been, to be call yourself a king of smokers, sir? Okay, it costs a lot in my life. It costs a lot. Because uh, even in my head, in work, in everything, even in my own house, in my room, if you enter my room, you will never perceive any other apart from Zgalit, even my clothes, everything. In short, Zgalit is not a good thing. So I know that if, if I don't stop, if, there's many ways for human beings to die, excuse me to say. But they say there's no many ways to kill a cat. If you don't die with this, you will die with that. But I believe that if I don't stop that Zgalit, how, how, how I'm going about it, it will kill me one day. So I have to, you know, withdraw from it. So I thank God. But, there's like there are many ways also that Satan can destroy children. It's like drinking, fornication, this and that. At times it's not physical, it's a spiritually. If they buy it for you or they sell it for you, you will try your best, but you will call it. I try and So if 
God deliver you from the dead, at least you have to thank God and that God has delivered you and saved you for many things. Sir, you refer to the, the to the I must prevail program we have a whereby we are papa use uh, godly papa to break every lock that anything that be locked against us. Are you not trying to tell the whole world that there was something being locked against you to be smoking that you was that you were delivered from on that day? Because I hear you you refer to that program three months ago. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I want the, the whole world to know that, yes, for me, or to me, my smoking, I know that is not ordinary. So, I thank God, and I want everybody to know that that program that we have in this church, there's power on it, there's power in this church. Anything that you, have, you want to do, put the faith and trust that God will deliver you and God will help you. Don't, don't be, you know, in God and all, draw yourself that I uh, don't have faith, you are counseled and put it this and that. No, have the faith that God will do it and he will surely do it for you. The last one, sir. About the breaking of lock, padlock on that day. What do you have to say about the man of God, the supernatural lady that caused him to break that uh, lock on that day? Because we know, or we all know we are set free. So what do you have to say about the anointing they had, the one the mandate has been given, that used, uh, that prophetically used, God used to break every lock on our life, that set you free from the padlock of smoking. What do you have to say to the whole world about him today? What I'll say to the whole world, there's power in this church. And there's power in man of God. Mm -hmm. That program that we have in this uh, church that very day, mm -hmm. is a special program that God, everybody knows that yes. Mm -hmm. Because many people didn't believe. They thought that maybe pa uh, Father is joking or we are joking in this church. I want you to know that there's power in this church. Mm -hmm. power, Father has the power. So if you deliver or if you believe or you give yourself, mm -hmm. yourself chance, it's going to work in your life. Mm. Thank you so much, sir. Please, I want you to use this media to tell the whole world in the next time of prevent program that they should believe people can be locked up in one way or the other to be addicted to one thing or the other. Please, I want you to use this media to invite the whole world when there is a must prevent program or anything is going on in their church. It can look funny in their face, but in our in a spiritual way, God is breaking everything. So, please, I want you to use this media to invite the whole world watching you now for the next program. Yeah. I, I use this uh, privilege to tell the whole world that anything, that's what I have already said, any program that's going on in church, be serious and trustful and hope, hopeful on it. Because if you believe, it will be done. Because there's no faith or there's no hope without believing. If you have the faith and believe, it will be done. Thank so, you so much. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. You answer all uh, my questions. You really look different from the way you look before, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations, man. Hallelujah. We are still on testimony time, brother. Sunset, please match on for your testimony. Great clap of him unto the Lord as he's marching for you. Our instrumental special clap we did for them. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. In fact, all the women in the house, I want you to clap for yourself. Today is a special day in my life. And I'm trust, I give God all the glory for the safe delivering for my beloved wife and my baby boy. So God has made this possible for my wife here to deliver safely without no complications. God has transmogrified my hopeless desire into a fruitful highland, my disgrace to amazing grace. I'm also granting my wife and my beloved son an immunity sparking like electricity to transmit satanic So, we are thanking God for the salvation of our life, of our souls, and of our families. And also, I'm giving a special thanks to our Papa in the Lord. God bless you, sir. Mama, God bless you. God will strengthen you, God will bless you abundantly. All your expectations shall come true. And as many of us that celebrated with us, God is going to surprise you. Open your doors in Jesus' name. Also, I thank my big brother, Brother Lucky, and my sisters and the Lord who also encourage us, who talk to us over and give us some hopes and courage. We bless you all for your lives in Jesus' name. We bless God for everything we've done. Sir, just one word, sir. You said God has turned your desert into a fruitful land. Only that one, because we know we have been praying on that since the beginning of the year, according to Isaiah 43, 18, that our desert, there is water in our desert and everything. So what makes you, what, how do you connect your, your words today with that prayer we have been praying since the beginning of the year, according to Isaiah 43, verse 18, sir? I believe that in the midst of desert, there are words of steel, if you believe in God, and if you have faith. So, Normally, we, I pray as well. I wasn't really 
Like, I don't take everything so serious, but God has made it possible. He turned everything to a fruitful island. So Amen. I return all the glory to Amen. God. Thank you for being the prevailing divine proof of our prayer. Congratulations once again, ma. You are welcome to living my faith, Abana Kuma. I just want to thank God for what God has done for me, what God has done in my family. I just want to return all the glory to God. Thank you so much, sister. If you can think well, the whole church is coming to celebrate with you later. Yes. Congratulations once again on behalf of Living by Faith Abanako Worldwide. Hallelujah. Sister Rachel, please march forward for your testimony. And those who haven't given their name, please, you are feel free to come forward for your testimony. The whole world wants to hear your testimony. They want to learn from you. They want to learn from your faith. They want to take something from you. Just come out to tell what the Lord has been doing for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. I just want to thank God for my life, for the life of my family. I want to appreciate this great God because he has been doing marvelous things in my life. He has been doing victorious things in my life. I want to return the glory to God because what I went for, for I went to Italy to do some document issue. And I thank God that I received what I went there to do. And I appreciate great, this great God because last week I received my resident German permit. <laughs> Ma. Congratulations, ma. If you can think where, you can think where. Not the way you clap your hand for her. That's the way you will receive your own. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just want to give God all the glory for the life of my family. My mother, we have been trying to bring her here since the since I lost my father. But I just thank God last week she was here. because it was not easy. When she was coming, we were just thinking, how will she get here? Because she was coming in love. And for her age, she somehow difficult. And to God be all the glory, when she got to Frankfurt, we were expecting, because my brother paid a, a VIP for her, so that it would be easy for her to come. But she said when they got to Frankfurt, she came down. She saw people coming out from the flight, so she just followed them. She's supposed to wait so that the air hostess will come and pick her. So she, she saw them coming down, so she just followed them. She was going with them. And Frankfurt Airport is a very big place. It's confusing if you have not passed through there before. So she just went with them, and when she got to the immigration office, they took her, her documents and she was... They took her documents and they asked her questions. So it was somehow complicated and they decided to call my brother. So he explained everything to them. So they told her, Madam, sit down. Everything is settled. So she sat down. So when it was time for her to board from Frankfurt to Nuremberg, she just followed them. She said she saw them going. She just followed them. It was just, spe it was just special grace that brought her here. So she followed them and when they got to Frankfurt, Nuremberg, she came down. We were there waiting for her because her flight was to land uh, 10.35. So she just came down and she was going, just following them. Her bag, she just left the bag. She didn't even bother to wait for the bag. So we were just outside waiting. And we saw her, we were just asking, Nene, Nene, Nene. She just heard the nail we call her. So she just told, said, where are you going? He said, I saw them going now, so I have to forget her. So we said, no, where is your bag? He said, ah. I thought the flight spoiled. We are, we are going to take off. To <laughs> so my brother then went and uh, she, he took the bag and everything was okay. So I just want to give God all the glory for the Lord himself. So I'm expecting that when I have to, she will come and visit you people. Yeah. Congratulations, man. You will come and your mother to come and visit you. Celebrate God in the life of our sister. Congratulations, man. Hallelujah. You are still testing all the time. Praise the Lord. Last week I came here to testify because I'm ahead of my son. And before we even get home, the temperature starts getting high. And the morning of it, 
we couldn't hold, get hold of it wait that we have to rush them to the hospital there is doctor and the doctors look the doctor looks at him and he says the situation is too bad that we have to rush him to clinical to take immediate treatment and when we get to the clinical they begin to run, take medical tests as if there is something so serious i look at because when i look at the boy he doesn't shake anymore everywhere everybody on his body just weak temperature they measure two points uh, uh, Nine point, his weight was 9.5, 9.6 is before they get to clinical, come, you reduce to, so, the way, I fear begin to, but I know, I want you to call mama, I mean papa, but I know that it's going to be okay, because I'm in this insulin ground. So I said, I will not bother to call, until, if it was, if they admitted him there, until the Wednesday, papa called, I said, well, I now, when papa called, I explained to him, but, he said, why did I call? Because I would never, I know I would not call because I know the grace already covered. So, on that thousand of it, so Papa was telling me this, but I was thinking, I said, in my mind, I was, there is a scripture I used to read that we always occur. Whatever in Philippians 4, verse 9, it says, Everything you learn, what things you see about me, the good things, everything about you see, learn from it, keep to it. I have seen them. What comes to me, I've been in this church for almost a year. I mean, for more than one year. I've not seen Papa children go to hospital. Then, why will my child son go to a hospital? For more than, not less than one year, he's going to sleep in the hospital for two days, for two, twice. I said, no. So, not long, Papa called me and he was saying, if my children don't go to the hospital, hospital, go and tell them to release the boy. I said, okay, then I called, immediately when I get to the, I called my wife, tell them you are leaving tomorrow. And they went, the following morning of it, the Joseph already, before she even meets them to say that, Joseph has already pulled your drip and everything on his body. The doctors tried to come and fix them, but they couldn't. They tried and tried. They called another doctor, come to try to fix drip again, force drip on him. They couldn't. That was on Friday. They said, okay, since everything is this, you have to go. That was how they had to be strong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, I don't know where to start from. Let me go to your wife, because mother really know that feeling more than a man. Mother, what do you have to say? I just want to appreciate God. I want to thank him for keeping my son for me. And key to the word of the man of God, you said his children never go to any hospital. And why would you be fellowshipping here and your children will be going to hospital? How did you connect that to your son, pulling off all the drip that he doesn't want to stay there anymore, sir? You see, when you are working with a man that is in the spirit, the spirit is always, you see, the, pres the, God, the pres uh, in, the, in the realm of the spirit, there is no distance. So wherever we are, the spirit is already there. So before that thoughts come to me, I know that before before it comes to me, it has already moved. It's moving around. So I believe that this, this, when you are moving in the, with the man with the spirit, you have to always keep and stick to the word of God and the things that are coming from him. Because if you don't, that is where you are deviating yourself, you are cutting yourself off. But when you stick to the word, according to the word, according to the word, do a Philippians 4 verse 3, and you stick to the word, and st stick to the man of God that you are up, you are under, then you will see everything begin to turn around for you. Even if baby has to submit also to pull it up. Congratulations, sir. Hallelujah. We are still testimony time. Our twins voices in the house today. Let's stand up for the house of the Lord. For the same thing that our twins say it. Hallelujah! Praise God. Praise God Jesus. I'm so cool with God. I don't know how to do this song. Well, I don't have more to say. I was a father of one. Now, I'm a father of three. Amen. I thank God for my wife, I thank God for the safe delivery. I also thank God for Papa, for what they have done for me, assisting me for everything. Today, the children, they are okay. Some people are saying that uh, when they give twins like that, they spend three months, four months in the hospital for them, leave them. But my own, it doesn't take time. It's just five days. And then they I thank God for that. Uh, with this, those that is looking for fruit of the womb, God will bless you in the mighty name of God. If you can take well, 
You must be father of one. Now all of a sudden it's a father of three. Hallelujah. And as you connect yourself to them today, you are the next daddy here with your twins boys. Hallelujah. Don't be looking for guests. You are the next daddy here with your twins girls. Hallelujah. We are still on testimony time. If there's no more testimony, Sister Joe, come and lead us. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for what He has done for me. So that was um 18. I was very tired. I said, ah, this is just too much. I'm tired. So I want to pray that night. After we pray, I to one. So something else can come say. Oh, ah, these are 19. I used to run the stomach. Your belly fall asleep. So I lay down, I pray. So this baby, I just give three days to come out because I'm tired. So around one o'clock, I want to after one, I go sleep. So I saw a hand in the dream. It's like caught something in my um, stomach. I said, what is this? I woke up. The woke up. The water has broken. So that was around. After two, next two o'clock, I don't that then. I woke up and called Sir Joy. I said, The water has broken. I don't make a soft pain, serious pain. So I I gave my voice record around 212, 212 to 216. Before I get to hospital, it was about two something, and I gave her 245. <laughs> So when I came down to home, that was on uh, Sunday, I was weak and I was feeling serious headache. I said, God, how can I take on my baby and I'm having a headache, two kids, oh. I said, I want to cry, but some said, do the same thing you did before that made you to delay that safe or sound. So I did another thing again, I said, headache, I don't know you, God, I know, live my life. Since then, I'm strong, no more headache, no more pain. And God was glass. I want to cry, but I was trying to cry, but I just as I praising God, singing worship. The man was asking me, Are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. But they are not speaking in tongues. I'm just blind. The man said, What are you saying? I said, I don't know. But they were all laughing at me. For God be glory, I did not say for son. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations, ma. Congratulations. We give God the glory for your life. And we are all coming to celebrate with all the new babies and the parents in the house today, ma. God bless you, ma. We are still on testimony time. All the babies are watching for us, and we are expecting them to be sitting down. You should be thankful for them for the babies. They are not happy for the parents. If you are expecting God for you, you should be thankful.